Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am your glorious host, glorious, um, Daniel Goodwill. Over there, John Landowski. How you doing, John? Hey, good. Tired, but good. Yeah, it's one of those days. The rain didn't help this morning. <laughs> no. My bones are killing me. Um, But today we had a double header, which... <sighs> Tomorrow is our, wait, we're not, tomorrow is uh, Montreal, Nashville and Montreal, but today it's our swing through the eastern part of Canada. So we make a pit stop at the Hockey Hall of Fame and make a trip to Toronto. Yeah. So the Preds took out the Leafs and I turned it over to John. All right. Shots on goal in the first period, Toronto outshot Nashville 15 to 10. In the second period, uh, Nashville and Toronto had seven shots apiece. In the third period, Nashville outshot Toronto 16 to 13. And in total, Toronto outshot Nashville 35 to 33. In the face-off circle, Toronto was better at 54% to 46%. On the power play, the Predators went 0 for 2, while Toronto went 1 for 5. Penalty minutes, Predators had 10, Toronto had 4. Hits, the Predators had 36. The Maple Leafs had 25. Blocks, the Predators had 13, the Maple Leafs 14, and giveaways, the Predators 7, the Maple Leafs 9. Scoring in the first period at the 1654 mark is John Tavares with his 20th of the season with an assist from William Nylander, his 24th, and Timothy Lilligren, his 6th. I know way more about this Leafs team than I should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, scoring in the second was Philip Forsberg at the one. 46 mark his 17th of the season it is like ninth game in a row it feels like um with an assist from Parson which it feels like his ninth point in a row and Duchesne his uh 20th Parson is 11th assist of the season then scoring in the third at the 1854 mark on the power play was Mitch Marner his 16th with an assist from William Nylander his 25th and John Tavares his 22nd Funny fact, John Tavares was wishing to be drafted by the Nashville Predators at one point in time when he was drafted in Nashville, number one overall. Um, in net for the Stars was Matt Murray. He stopped 32 of 33 with a .970 uh, save percentage. In net for the Predators was UC Saros stopping 30. Three of 35 with a 0.943 save percentage. Not a bad night for either goaltender, but one did have to lose. Um, Saros made a crucial mistake at the last second, got a little too far out of the net and couldn't recover during the power play goal. If he had went back, he would have got called for an interference and went down five on three because there was actually a guy behind him and he would have blocked the net. So um, he was trying to get out of Saros's way as well. So interesting little tidbit. Um, good game from the Preds against a solid team. Um, even though we lost, uh, we still put up that swinging fight. Um, just take this and go tomorrow into Montreal and build on it. Yeah. Um, in transaction news, Roland McEwen was sent back to Milwaukee. Um, and Yaroslav Askarov was called up to Nashville, I believe, to give rest tomorrow. As as Lankinen is battling lingering issues, I believe I was told. I've been told a lot of things. I've read a lot of things. It's like, uh, Lankinen's hurt. Lankinen's got lingering issues. Lankinen's girlfriend's pregnant. Saros needs a break. Uh, this, that. I'm like, mm -hmm. we don't know. But I would guess that the reason he was called up would be lingering issues. Or the labor thing, because I'm not sure, and I don't dig into people's personal lives. So, um, in, in a sense of all of this, you know, 
I, I think the Preds played well in a good defensively structured game. They kept this team kind of in check with, you know, um, I saw, I, I mean, there was one gripe I had. I, I think that was a, a, a Fabro uh, interference penalty that I saw that literally ticked me off. I was just like, that was dumb. Yeah. That was a dumb penalty. And Jankowski's double minor on Morgan Riley. Um, if he had a drop of blood on his glove from sticking his finger up his nose, you can get four minutes. So, to the ability of me being a podcaster, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, Morgan Riley, because he's not known for doing stuff like that, and say that it was legit, but I didn't see it. I didn't see the blood, so. All right. Well, speaking of blood, um, the Admirals since losing to the Ducks have been out for blood. <clears throat> um, they've been wanting to kick the crap out of anybody that comes in front of them. Yeah. Um, aggressive hockey, uh, two way hockey. Defense turns into offense type hockey. That is what makes you win championships. All also, right. consistency. So, at this point, yet again, statistically, I turn it over to John. <laughs> All right. Milwaukee took on the Tucson Roadrunners today. Shots on goal in the first period. Milwaukee outshot Tucson nine to eight. In the second period, they outshot Tucson 17 to nine. In the third period, Tucson outshot Milwaukee 13 to 12. And in total, Milwaukee outshot Tucson 38 to 30. Milwaukee on the power play went one for six with 11 minutes, four infractions, while Tucson went 0 for two with 19 minutes, eight infractions. Scoring in the first was Joachim Kondalik with his fourth, with an assist from Igor Afanasi of his eighth, and Narvin Mutter his fourth. Um, I'm still waiting on Mutter to get his first pro goal. Um, Keeper Sherwood then scores two minutes later with his 14th with an assist from John Leonard, his 15th, and Luke Evangelista with his 21st. Uh, then Hudson Elianuk scored his third with an assist from Adam Cracknell, his 11th, and Michael Corcone, his 28th adding on to his league leading points. All right. Then the second at the 557 mark, Marcus Nermi scores his 10th of the year on the power play with assists from Mark Delgaizo, his 12th, and Zach Sanford, his 6th. Then at the 1802 mark, Phil Tomasino scores his 11th of the year. Assisted by Xavier Bouchard, his first, and Tim Schaller, his seven. That was also Xavier Bouchard's first AHL pro point. Nice. Then in the third period, at, <clears throat> sorry. Then the third period at the 46 second mark, Tucson scores with a goal from Adam Cracknell, his 12th of the year, assisted by Will Riley, his second, Michael Carcone, his 29th. Then at the 6.53 mark, Tucson scores again from Adam Cracknell, his 13th, assisted by Vladislav Kolil... Polonichuk. I'm I'm just going to guess here. I've got to get better. Oh, at it. Okay. And then by Michael Carcone, his 30th. Then scoring at the 1857 mark was Marcus Nerny, his 11th, with an assist from Mark Delgado, his 13th. Then Zach Sanford scored his third with an assist from Jordan Gross and uh, Kevin Graval. Both of those goals were scored on the empty net. Not like it didn't feel like the net was empty the last two nights. The only thing it was filled with was talks. Right. That goes on both sides. Um, Narvin Ma Mutter had a nice, interesting little fight with Curtis Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> right. He hit him so hard, they both fell to the ice. <laughs> um, if 
I'm going to say anything about the Roadrunners team now seeing them in back-to-back -back nights. They got to get better structurally. Yeah. Too many dumb penalties. Because and, and, uh, this is where, where our unbiasedness comes in, because I'm talking about how you fix your game. Right. Too many men on the ice three times in two nights. That is bad. Yeah. As a, as a coach, that is unacceptable from my team. If I were the coach, all of them would be, have a bad <laughs> game tomorrow morning. You know, and, and that's just me. But let's jump into some of the other stats. In that for the Admirals with Devin Cooley again, stopping 27 of 30, giving up three goals, living up to his nickname, three goal Cooley. Averages almost three goals a game. Uh, David Tendek, he gave up uh, four, stopping 23, tw uh, sorry, 23, 32 of 36. It felt like he stopped nothing. Um, as far as I'm concerned with this team, the Admirals team, uh, we do need to clean up the the a little bit of of the uh, chippiness, the unfair chippiness that we create. Yeah. Um. Other than that, we're fine. All right. Your referees were Brandon Schrader and Jordan Watt. Linesmen were Anthony Caruso and Gabe Lohman. Uh, the Admirals now take a 2 nothing lead in our series. The Admirals play them a, two months from now, literally, um, on the 10th and 11th of March. So literally, back-to-back -back games, we played them the 10th and the 11th this month. Two months from now, we do it again. Same day. Um, by the way, go out and get your tickets for those games. They're both concert nights. We've got... Uh, Russell Dickerson and Dropkick Murphys. So come on out and have 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 some fun with some friends, drink some cold ones, maybe celebrate St. Patrick's Day a little early. Um, well, the question is, well, what does this game do for the Admiral standings? We're tied for second place with a game in hand against Rockford, and we play Texas twice. This weekend, the Admirals are undefeated against Texas this season. We have not lost to them. Mm. <laughs> you know, the superstition sky in me. Um, you know, I could see us being able to do it. You got yeah. You got to do it. Um, I think that over the last few games, you know, Cooley getting back in his motions. Um, Askarov's on fire, by the way. Congratulations to Yaroslav Askarov and Tommy Novak for being named AHL All-Stars this season. Yes, Reds fans, I get it. Tommy Novak is staying there. But the Preds can be nice and give him the AHL All-Star experience. They're all-Star game is literally a week to the day from theirs. What the Preds could do is call somebody up, do a paper transaction, send someone down. Send him down. He's still waiver exempt, so <clears throat> he doesn't have to go through waivers for this. It's literally just for the All-Star game. Otherwise, yeah. the Admirals do have the right to replace him with a player from their team. Of equal or closer points at the time, which to my recollection would be Luke Evangelista, who has 20. How much? How many points does Evangelista have? I don't think we said his name. Well, okay, so he had 21. There we go. Let's just go here. He has eight goals, 21 assists, 29 points, which is actually more than Novak. Um, believe it or not, I mean, he's doing very well. Um, he has one game winning goal, two shootout goals on four shootout attempts. He's shooting at a 12% clip, which is better than most. 
Um, and is playing very well. Um, you know, so I, I mean, I think that Yarrow getting it is warranted. Yarrow is one of the leading young goalies in our, our division. Um, you know, I, I could see, uh, uh, Texas's goalie getting it as well. Um, it was also nice to see former Admiral Anthony Richard get nominated as well. Yeah. Um, he will be most likely playing tomorrow for Montreal as he has already scored two goals in Montreal. And, you know, uh, kudos to him because I know sometimes you just want to play at home. Um, and I can't blame him for that. So uh, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They still do hand sharpened skates like think of mighty ducks think of hans and when he's sitting there and gliding it he's there's one of the few people in the world and in, in this state that still do it um that way um with love and care so check out hockey locker thank you guys for watching i'm daniel john lindowski see y'all tomorrow